Well, thank you, Almut. Uh, good morning to all the people that joined this morning session. Um, just a brief introduction on, on what we are interested in. Uh, that is skeletal muscle deconditioning, that is a consequence of immobilization, disuse or apoc activity like in aging or in disease like cancer cachexia or immobilized uh, due to cast, and that is a common condition in patients undergo post-surgery rehabilitation. That is our main focus at the moment. So post-surgery rehabilitation after knee and total hip uh, replacement. So, in the literature, there are many, many data about the changes that are induced in the skeletal muscle during the conditioning, either in humans or in different animal models. And major changes are skeletal muscle atrophy, which is demonstrated by a decrease in the cross-sectional area of the involved muscles, together with a fiber type uh, uh, switching with metabolic reprogramming involving um, uh, predominantly a shift toward the uh, type 1 fibers and a decrease in strength and functional capacity that though is not uh, um, uh, um, correlating with the uh, decrease of the cross-sectional area. And this is probably due, as uh, Feliciano has been already demonstrated and shown and discussed, to a decrease in the calcium release units that are important to produce force. Um, there are many, many data, and uh, Professor Bottinelli yesterday shown us about the underlying mechanisms that are responsible for the imbalance of between protein synthesis and protein degradation that causes skeletal muscle atrophy, and about the triggers factors, ROS production and impairment in the mitochondria uh, dynamics. But there are at the moment few data regarding denervation as early determinants of muscle atrophy in these conditions. In particular, in humans, there is a, a study published in 2017 um, uh, using a dry immersion model of three days that demonstrated that uh, there is an, a significant increase of NCAM positive myofibers uh, um, as a sign of denervation. Similar findings were uh, demonstrated after 14 days of bed rest, and also we contributed to this field uh, in a project that, that was uh, supervised by Professor. Uh, um, uh, Narici, he shown all the results on Wednesday, and I was involved in the project in evaluating the expression of income as a marker of denervation. And indeed, uh, at early at day five of bed rest, income positive myofibers increased in percentage and further significantly increased after 10 days. And these features were in uh, association with an increase the serum levels of the C-terminal fragment of agrin. Agrin is a protein that is involved in the uh, stabilization of the neuromuscular junction during uh, um, um, develop, um, postnatal um, birth, uh, myogenesis and uh, during uh, denervation and reinnervation. And indeed, we observed uh, a significant increase over the time of the serum levels of this fragment that is produced by cleavage, uh, by an, en an enzymatic cleavage by trypsin. And interestingly, after two, two days uh, at the end of the bed rest experiments, the serum levels of CAF decreased. And this is uh, interesting because uh, it's meaning that uh, these uh, phenomena are very plastic and that CAF can be also used as a marker of uh, activity and inactivity. So as Feliciano said, we decided to um, further address this issue running a pilot study. All of us were involved, in, including Antonio Musaro in Rome, and we received uh, muscles from the immobilized mice, rehabilitated mice, and from controlled mice. Um, I was involved in particular, and Barbara Ravara in my group, um, evaluating 
soleus muscles and gastrocnemius muscles at the morphological level. So Barbara performed all the sectioning and staining and morphometrical analysis. And despite we did not observe the puzzling, uh, um, an important decrease of the overall myofiber size in immobilized muscles, the red bar, um, 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 evaluating the myofiber distribution, um, we can clearly see that the spectrum of the red bar that, represent, that are representative of the myofiber size in immobilized muscles is, is shift towards a smaller diameter, either in uh, gastrocnemius and in soleus muscles. So putting these um, myofibers in a proportional basis with respect to the all myofibers detected and used in the quantitative analysis, calculating the so-called atrophy factor, we did find, uh, find an in a significant increase of the atrophy factor, especially in the soleus muscle that seems to be more affected by immobilization. And this was rescued by rehabilitation as demonstrated by the shift of the spectrum in the gray bar towards larger uh, myofiber diameter. And uh, Antonio Musaro in Rome, it's a pity that he was not here to discuss his data, analyzed the activation of the atrogenes and uh, he, he did find a significant increase of both atrogen 1 and MRF1 either in immobilized muscles, the red bar, and in the contralateral leg of the uh, immobilized mice. While this upregulation was rescued returning to the basal leg, levels in the rehabilitated legs, either in the contralateral and in the rehabilitated ones. Um, we did not observe significant or major changes either regarding the fast type either uh, of the um, fibers, either fast or slow in the gastrocnemius and in soleus. Rehabilitation was affected in, in inducing a mild increase of the myofiber atrophy of slow type fibers in, most, uh, in both muscles. So we further addressed the, the denervation issue in the uh, cross-sectional that were already prepared for morphometrical analysis to analyze the expression of NCAM. NCAM is primarily confined at the postsynaptic membrane in adult and normally innervated myofibers, co-localizing with the alpha bungarotoxin at the postsynaptic sites. But when myofibers is denervated, NCAM starts to relocalize all along the the sarcolemma giving a sarcolemmal positive staining and within the sarcoplasm. So giving an hallmark with this typical staining of denervation event. So we tested for the expression of NCAM in the three different conditions. The interpretation of the results of the NCAM staining are quite tricky because NCAM can stain either satellite cells or activated satellite cells or unmyelinated fibers that run all along the blood vessels, but in quantitative analysis, only we included those myofibers having a sarcolemmal ring and a positive sarcoplasmic staining. And indeed, we found a clear trend of an increased numbers of the NCAM positive myofibers in immobilized mice, the immobilized muscles that was rescued by rehabilitation. And again, these results were consistent uh, with the gene expression analysis that Antonio Musaro performed regarding the uh, in, uh, expression of the gamma isoform, that is an embryonic isoform of the acetylcholine receptor that is uh, active, um, uh, overexpressed or upregulated during denervation. And in immobilized mu uh, muscles, this isoform was uh, um, clearly upregulated together with a down regulation of the uh, isoform epsilon, that is the isoform expressed in normally innervated muscles. So these two uh, results again go consistently in that uh, tell us that during immobilization, denervation event can occur. 
So we wanted to further address this, this issue, trying to evaluate um, at least not the morphology because these uh, analyses were performed in, on cross-section and not in wall mount, on longitudinally oriented section, at least the, the aspect of the narrow muscular junction, in particular with regard to the NCAM staining. Therefore, we performed a co-immuno localization using alpha bungarotoxin and NCAM in all the three uh, type of conditions and in control we did observe the, a merge of the two different staining in the narrow muscular junction while in the immobilized mice the two stainings were clearly displaced. So uh, NCAM starts to be redistributed apart from the postsynaptic sites, from the staining of the bungarotoxin in the perisynaptic region. I cannot say by this staining if it is at the presynaptic sites, it can be also at the basal lamina, but it is clearly delocalized from the postsynaptic membrane as uh, um, uh, indicated by the bungarotoxin staining. And in the rehabilitated mice, we uh, observed uh, an intermediate situation with some N NMJ that were lo co-localizing the two signals and uh, uh, some NMJ in which the two signals were still uh, displaced. So we counted the, the, per the, the percentage of NCAM with this type of signals uh, displaced or either merged in the three different conditions and indeed in immobilized mice the percentage of NCAM showing clearly the displacement of the two stainings was increased and this was rescued partially by rehabilitation, indicating that uh, during immobilization there are early events that involved a displacement and a redistribution of income within the neuromuscular junction, suggesting a neuromuscular junction instability. Uh, Antonio Musaro addressed further this issue, so he evaluated the two different uh, um, uh, pay players involved in denervation and re -innervation. One is uh, the MIR-206, uh, that is a muscle-specific MIRNA, which is involved in uh, a re -innervation event regulating neuromuscular junction homeostasis that was upregulated in rehabilitated muscles. And uh, consist consistently with this, uh, its downstream target, which is the age DAC4 was down-regulated in rehabilitated muscles, indicating that the neuromuscular junction that is stabilized in immobilized muscles is somehow re-stabilized um, by the upregulation of MIRNA-206 and the down-regulation of HDAF4. We further addressed this issue also evaluating the circulating levels of uh, agrin. We uh, got only few serum samples from the either control immobilized and rehabilitated mice and even though we did not observe significant changes in the three um, conditions Conditions, we, do, we did observe a very well correlation between the serum level of CAF and the percentage of displaced neuromuscular junction in immobilized muscle, indicating that the higher level of agrin can be detected and the higher number of neuromuscular junction with displaced staining are also uh, detected in the muscle. So, we are aware that this study at the moment has several limitations, but regarding also the number of the samples and the, 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 the technique in which we evaluated the neuromuscular junction, let me say aspect and morphology, what we can say up to now as interim results is that despite no major changes were observed at the morphological level, a clear uh, activation of the atrophy program was detected that was rescued by the rehabilitation protocol. And come sarcolemal and sarcoplasmic redistribution together with a displaced distribution with respect to the postsynaptic sites at the neuromuscular junction was detected up 
upon immobilization, and this was partially rescued by ray innervation. So what we, we, the take-home message is up to now, and that would be further addressed and confirmed with the additional studies, are that this data, this data altogether also with the Feliciano analysis of the at ultrastructural level suggests that immobilization inducing a defect in muscle nerve communication in the immobilized leg that could be a trigger event for skeletal muscle atrophy, and that the rehabilitation protocol by treadmill running seems to be effective in rescue of this destabilization inducing a restabilization of the neuromuscular junction. So I would like to thank to thank all the collaborators, in particular Barbara Ravare and my group, and Elena Monti that was initially involved, uh, she spent some uh, years, uh, some um, months in my lab in um, managing the animal model in Professor uh, um, Protasi's lab. Of course, Feliciano and Antonio and uh, uh, Helmut for all his support, uh, or not only um, by founding, and also Hugo for uh, uh, all of his effort and energy in organizing every year this Congress. And thank for all of you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Sandra. The other question, please. I did not understand the contralateral. Uh, yeah. I, I did not understand why the contralateral leg increased also the expression of MOF1 at Rogin1 in your yeah. model. I don't know. There are two possibilities, and we discuss also uh, about this with the, um, Professor Bottinelli. One possibility is that it's not moving properly, so an activation of the atrophy program is uh, induced also in the contralateral leg because the other one is immobilized. But another possibility is just the opposite, an overload of the muscles because it has to take care about mobility because the other one is immobilized and there are some papers in the literature that demonstrates that during overloading also the atrophic program can be uh, induced just to compensate or to regulate the uh, hypertrophy that is induced by the overload. So, at the morphological level, we did not observe differences between the contralateral leg and the control, real control leg. But at the gene expression level, yes. And but did you measure the muscle weights in no, the two legs? we didn't. No. We didn't, but this, uh, this will be done for sure the next time. That would time. really answer the question. I don't know, question. Barbara, yeah, if um, by eye there were some differences between the immobilized muscles, not so much. So we, the next time we will do it. But it looks as though you have a model which has reduced overall physical activity, yeah. Yeah. really. That's but true. with the uh, end plate differences, was, was there a difference between the cast limb and the contralateral limb? No. No. So also the changes are similar. Yeah. yeah, it's similar. So it's, yeah. uh, I think it seems a reduction in physical activity in general. Yeah. 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 The next question was here. <laughs> Very nice. Um, regarding the presynaptic innervation, so there, yeah. there's a, there are two possibilities. I think it either you get really uh, physical innervation, yeah. or it's really neural activity that's way, way down. So, and I think you can actually have these changes induced by the lack of neuronal activity alone. Okay. So, it might be interesting to look at the presynaptic terminal as yes. we discussed yesterday, but also um, synaptic recordings of NMJs or maybe uh -huh. some, yeah, some yeah. Um, You're right. uh, you know, Thank um, you. Some even surface, some, some, some neuronal recordings of, uh, on the muscle to see if it's actually there. Yeah. And, it, and that may be sufficient to induce all the changes that you see without having uh, physical denervation. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, we should perform some EMG to, to the muscle to have uh, an idea of the function of the neuromuscular junction itself and to address this issue. Thank you very much. Yeah. So th I want to answer you because f for you it's uh, we do electrical stimulation to not to, to induce always the activity of the neuromuscular junction and not to degenerate them by resting. You know, so this is in humans. You know, maybe we have to do it. But it's mice, it's tricky to, to stimulate. So, are there 
some other important question. The last question now, because we have no a minute break. I was curious to know if you uh, plan to measure the expression of exercise-induced myokines like musclin uh, or um, other myokines, irisine, in the muscle that were uh, uh, casted yeah. compared to the other and after rehab. Yeah, we didn't think about that, but this is a good suggestion. And if you are interested, we can collaborate on that, yes. And also Thank about hypert compensatory hypertrophy on the other leg, uh, yeah. if you measure some markers of to say of yes, hypertrophy. in six days yeah. there was compensatory hypertrophy. Yeah, yeah, you're right. At the morphological level, we haven't seen that, but we should measure some I'm markers at the gene expression level. Yeah.